This is a demonstration using the NX expression system to do some engineering design calculations. And a uh, product template will make an appearance here as well. Uh, so this is a little pressure relief valve assembly. And uh, to explain how this works there, some gas will be under pressure over here on the left end. Uh, the blue end here, it'll come in and, uh, and press on the red piston, right? And as we, uh, as the pressure uh, gets great enough there, uh, of course, it's going to push that piston inward. Uh, on the opposite side, we'll have a spring that's going to be in between the green component and the red piston here. It'll be pushing back on that. That spring will push that back outward. And uh, the force, of course, of the pressure coming in and the spring coming out will end up being in equilibrium somewhere. Uh, now, if the pressure outside is high enough, it's going to push the piston in. And as it gets to these relief holes right here, right, as it creates some gap there, then the, the gas is going to vent out through the relief holes there. And it will reduce the pressure of the gas. And as the pressure falls, of course, this is going to come back to the left and close that gap, right? So, so that, that point right there where the piston goes past the edge of that hole really is our, our operating uh, position, right? Or uh, the, the pressure that's going to put the piston right at that p position there is kind of our operating, operating uh, pressure, our threshold pressure uh, for, this, uh, for this little assembly, okay? So let's, let's set that up. And, uh, and and do that design in here. So first of all, let's stick our spring in. Okay, um, we'll start doing that here uh, again in my project folder here. I've got a handy dandy uh, spring that's a product template already, and, uh, and we can go ahead and drop that in. We'll drop that into our assembly here, and that'll of course launch from the reuse library. We drag out a product template. It'll launch the UI for that product template. Uh, this one has a planar face that it wants for the end of the spring, so we'll grab that planar face. And a cylindrical face for the axis, so we'll grab that guy. So that'll position the end of it there. We, we don't know what our compressed length is there yet, so let's go ahead and throw that in there. Um, you'll notice that this product template has some inputs and also has some outputs, right? So this is going to tell us about the resultant force, the spring constants being reported for this particular one. Once we have it compressed, we'll, we'll get that current spring compression uh, will be reported there as well. So let's go ahead and say OK. That'll stick in our spring. There's our uncompressed spring, right? So it's uh, one of those kind of long floppy ones. We're going to smash it down in between these two guys. Uh, to do that, we're going to need to measure the distance between those faces in there, mounting faces. So we're just going to go here from. So it's going to go here from. Uh, that face into this face right over here, right? And that distance there is the one that we want to save. So that's a 35 right now. We'll say OK. Now if we look in our expressions in this part, I'm using Control E to launch expressions. You can also go to Tools, Expressions right there. That Control E accelerators right there. Uh, so that's our 35 distance that we just measured. This here is going to be our compressed length. Right, and uh, and so we'll we'll use that compressed length here in just a minute to drive our spring. So we can do that. We can edit our spring. We've got our edit reusable component right here for that reusable component. And as we do that, it'll launch that dialog again. Right now, we're we're actually editing the spring at the moment. Right, we're inside that spring part file, and, and so the number that we need, the measurement that we need, happened up at the assembly level. Right, so we're actually going to come from here reach up with an inner part expression to the assembly level. We'll grab that compressed length from the assembly and pull that down into our part. That's created a link now to that uh, compressed length uh, expression down in the spring. Now, even before we update the geometry here, you'll notice it's actually already done the work. It's already done the calculation here. We, we know that compressed length that's coming into this part. Because we know the compressed length, we can take the, the free length minus that compressed length, and that gives us our compression, right? So this is the, the, the kind of the operating distance, the spring there. And if we take that compression times the spring constant, that will give us the, the spring force that's going to come out of that. So we can kind of see that previewed here. That, that, that's all just numerical math. And, and then based on that numerical math, now we're going to update the geometry there. So you'll see the spring then come and, uh, and snap into place.
right? So that's pretty neat. So, so that spring now is following the piston, right? And as we come and change the position of the piston here, for instance, uh, that spring can come along for the ride now, right? We'll see that spring update there as we do that. So, so far so good, right? Now, as I mentioned, down in the spring, we've already, already calculated the force down there. Uh, but just to kind of see how we do that, uh, let, let's recreate that force calculation up here at the assembly level, right? Now, to do that, we've got our distance. We know that distance. What we need from the spring, uh, let's grab the free length of that spring and the spring constant, right? Those are the things that we'll need. Uh, so let's do that. So we'll go into our expressions here at the assembly level. We've got that compressed length. Let's go do multiple inner part expressions here this time. And uh, we'll go to that spring. And again, we'll go grab the, the uh, free length and the spring constant, right? And we'll do both of those at the same time. And uh, that'll bring those over. So with those in place now, we've got our compressed length. Um, what we need now is our uh, our spring compression, right? So this is the uh, the amount of compression we're going to have. And this, of course, is going to be our free length here minus our compressed length, right? Uh, that, of course, the distance minus the distance is going to still be a, a distance or a length here. So that'll, that'll uh, be an easy one. Um, from there, we want to take that spring compression times our spring constant, right? And that should give us our force. So that's our newtons per millimeter. This you see it has a force per unit length on it. Uh, times our millimeters there should end up with newtons, right? So let's do our spring force here. And this is going to be, again, our spring constant times our spring compression. The order of that doesn't matter at all. And X will figure out the order there. Uh, you'll notice here this one right now is set to be a length. Uh, we know this is that the, these have units on them, and as we multiply them together, that's actually going to come out with a force. And, and NX is actually going to figure that out for us here, right? If we just hit apply here, this is actually going to autocorrect the, the dimensionality for us. So as we hit apply, you'll notice that turned into a Newton's force and uh, did that automatically, which is pretty nice. So we're watching that for you and trying to keep the units straight. Okay, so we've got our spring force there now. So that's 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 how we did that, right? And a very similar calculations down in the spring there. Um, the equilibrium thing here, we got pressure on the other end, right? The pressure is going to come in and act on the end of that piston. Um, it, it's really going to be kind of the apparent cross section, right, of that pis piston uh, as we go in there. And so let's go in and measure really the, the couple of faces here. So there's that face and this face, right? And if we look at them are going to be our, our really our, our head on kind of cross sectional area there for that. So that combined area right there is the one that we want to save here for, uh, for this guy. So with that, let's go take that and go back to our expressions and let's rename that just so we know that's our operating area there. Uh, so we've got that name handy. Uh, with that, we can figure out the pressure, right? Because we've got a force here and we've got an area and we know how that works. So so we've got our operating pressure here will be, uh, when it's at equilibrium there, which it will be, right? We'll have our force there divided by the area, right? And if we want to choose the dimensionality, we can. I'll hit a P to jump down to the P's and we can grab pressure there. And uh, we can choose the specific pressure unit we want uh, in there if we want to. We'll stick with megapascals because that's a good one. And we're about 0.4 right now, right? And that's that's great. So we'll say OK, and that's uh, that's where we are. So from there, where what's the pressure when we get close? So let's take that piston again, and let's bring that piston down to right near where it's going to right near where it's going to uh, vent. Okay, and If we do that, let's take a look and see where we are. So first of all, our operating pressure now is about 0 .505, right? So we're just over 0.5 megapascals. So let's, let's take that, let's dial that in so that that's right at 0.5. Okay, 
to get that operating pressure right at 0.5, to have that critical pressure right there right at 0.5, we're going to need to move those holes just a little bit so that that pressure vents just at the right the right moment, right? When the force from the spring and the, the force from the pressure are in balance, we need the holes in just the right place to make that happen. So to do that, we need to drive those holes positions a little bit, right? Now in this valve body, if we go look in this valve body here, this will open uh, that in a new window, we can look at uh, the valve body here and let's look in the expressions for the valve body. And sure enough, we've got a relief holes position expression in here, about 52 right now millimeters. So that's going to stay in that 50 range, right? And, and what we want to do now is uh, back in the assembly here, let's create a new expression here that's going to be our holes position. And uh, we're going to use this one to drive now the hole position down in that uh, in the valve body part. So, so we'll start with this holes position one here in the assembly. Uh, again, we can go to our valve body part and uh, inside the valve body part here, let's grab the expressions here. And again, let's have this relief holes position now be driven by that in the assembly part, that holes position expression up there, right? So this now, again, we'll do an inner part expression. We'll pull in the the uh, holes position from the assembly right into this holes position and then assign that value into the relief holes position drive the relief holes position here from the assembly level so that's pretty cool so now we've got kind of all of the the operating parameters here in the assembly and uh, we can start to use those so for instance here um, if we're looking we can do it from here uh, if we're looking at that holes position right let's square that up a little bit we can see that if we change that hole position, it's 50 right now, change that to 45, uh, yeah, they move to the right there, right? If we change that to 55, yeah, they, they start mowing through the, the end right there, right? <laughs> That's okay. So somewhere in the middle there, right, we decided it was close to 50. We'll put those holes at about 50. Uh, it's going to be pretty close to where we're, we're going to end up, right, we think. Um, Actually, we're not really sure where it is, but it's in that range, right? It was fairly close to close to there. Now, to, to finish, kind of close the loop here, uh, what, what we want to do is have that piston follow the holes for a minute, right? And then we can wiggle the holes around, the piston will move, the gap here will change, the spring will update, we'll get our force back, and we can use that then to start dialing in the force, getting the force uh, to... Uh, uh, actually, yeah, get the force to uh, the, the pressure out here actually to, to 0.5 megapascals. Okay, so to do that, let's constrain that piston to follow that hole just temporarily here. And uh, so we can come in and create an assembly constraint here between the face on the end right there and one of these cylindrical holes right here, right? Now, that end of it is not the one we need, right? That's the that's too far. <laughs> But we can we can use the other side of that hole, right? Use that to toggle, and uh, that's the position we want to hang on to as we do this little analysis here. Okay, so with that, we've got our uh, piston constrained. Again, let's square that up, and we can play with the holes position here. If we take this to 45 now, we can see that the piston is coming along for the ride now, and uh, similarly, we'll do our 55 out there, right? And, uh, and let's look at those really quick. So at 55, our pressure is at 0.47. Okay, that's good. And if we go to 45, our pressure is at what? Uh, our pressure is at 0.57. So yeah, so we're bracketing our 0.5 there, so that's good. Um, let's go back to our 0.5, or sorry, our 50 position here. And, uh, and see how close that is. That's, that's actually pretty, a little closer. Yeah, 0.52. So that's, that's a good starting point. So let's start from there. And now that, we're, now that we have everything parametrically driven, uh, we can go in and, for instance, use the optimizer now to, to drive that. So let's, let's create a new optimization study in here, and we'll call this set pressure, right? That's what we're going to do here. And in that study, our objective here, of course, is going to be our pressure. 
So let's get our operating pressure, and that's our objective here. We want to drive that to 0 0.5 exactly. Okay, that's our plan. And to do that, the variable we're going to use to do that is the holes position. So as we change the hole position here, and it's going to pick up 10% automatically, which is actually that, yeah, that 45 to 55 we were just testing. That's a good range. And we know that in brackets the answer, right? Uh, so as we vary the holes position, uh, again, piston will move, gap here will change, spring will update, we get a new force, calculate new pressure, and uh, we'll drive to that operating pressure, right? So good. Uh, with that, that's just a nice, yeah, local alg optimizer that we'll use. And uh, so with those in place, yeah, let's kick this off and uh, let it wiggle a little bit here as it goes through that iteration a few times. That'll uh, dial in on an answer. And sure enough, there's our 0.5 operating pressure. There's the position we need to attain that operating pressure. And uh, at this point here, we've got our valve all dialed in. We look in our expressions here again. Uh, operating pressure is right at 0.5 now, which is right where we want it. So that's been, again, a little demonstration of NX expressions, using them to do some engineering design calculations, a little product template that appeared in there for the spring. Hope you find that useful.